Hey everyone, for years the MacBook Air has been considered one of the best ultra portable laptops, but for some reason Apple has chosen not to update it. However, the entry level MacBook Pro without the touch bar is probably the closest to a modern MacBook Air replacement. Look, I fully understand that this isn't literally a MacBook Air replacement because we haven't officially received the MacBook Air we've always wanted from Apple. For those of us who remember, the Air was one of the greatest laptops ever made. It was unanimously praised by most YouTubers and received great reviews from many official review sites. And what made it great is now lost in translation, mostly because there isn't a new version of it officially. And that's where this machine comes in. And by this machine, I'm referring to the entry-level MacBook Pro without the touch bar. That's this model. Now, here's my logic behind it. What made the Air great were these three important things. Portability, battery life, and the price. The MacBook Air provided exceptional portability. The machine was compact and incredibly light at the time. And pound for pound, you really couldn't find something comparable at the time. And great battery life at a reasonable price. The CPU power was respectable, but not the most powerful machine. But most people who wanted an ultra portable machine were not making CPU power a priority. The price was also really good. Maybe not at first, but eventually the price became very reasonable. When I was still a college student, I would see the air everywhere because it was portable. And for students, portability is one of the most important things. And obviously price which played a huge role. Pertaining to students, more and more schools are beginning to offer digital books, which are in PDF format rather than the traditional hardcover books. And that's great and all, but using the default application preview on a Mac can be rather limiting. And that's where PDF Element Express comes in, allowing you to manipulate PDFs with ease, but more importantly, allowing you to highlight important topics and comment sections within a chapter. And this allows you to study far more efficiently and giving you more flexibility with a digital PDF, allowing you to highlight sections just like you would an actual book. And of course, you can use this application for other more powerful things, such as making actual changes to a PDF document, similar to a Word document. And that makes copying important sections much easier. You can also use shapes for pointing out important sections, or even providing signatures for documents that might require them. With PDF Element Express, you can supercharge your PDF editing. And also the application is available for iOS and Android. So if you're interested in trying this application, I will link it down below. So check it out. A very long time ago, I bought my first laptop. And at the time, I only cared about hardware performance. And I ended up purchasing a 15 inch beast, which was too heavy to carry around which ultimately became a glorified desktop. And it never left the house. So if anything, I should have bought a proper desktop, which would have yielded greater performance. And ever since then, if I was considering a laptop, I would only consider portable laptops. If you're gonna buy a laptop, make sure that it actually gets used as a laptop, rather than it being too heavy or becoming a glorified desktop that never leaves your home. So before you purchase a notebook, ask yourself, what do you need it for? Will it be truly used as a portable notebook or will it transform into a glorified desktop? If you truly want portability, look no further. If you need more CPU power, then you will have to upgrade and sacrifice some of the battery life by moving up to a quad core. I fully understand that the quad core machines are rated at the same 10 hour battery lives, but that's rather misleading. Most review outlets place the touch bar machines below 10 hours, and that's while using the machines rather passively. In terms of design, Apple once again hits a home run. The design is classy and it really looks like a premium product. The notebook is very thin, measuring in at 0.59 inches, which by the way is thinner than the thickest part of the MacBook Air. Apple really knows how to create a beautiful product with nothing feeling cheap. The smooth trackpad is easily the best trackpad on any notebook. In terms of the retina display, well, it's marvelous. And this feature alone is what virtually killed the current MacBook Air. The difference between the old display and this one is drastic. It is just a pleasure to work on. 
this display is what an official MacBook Air needs. And I think Apple knows this. So let's discuss the performance. This here is a dual core machine with a low power CPU, which means it doesn't generate very much heat. And it's part of the reason why Apple decided not to include a more sophisticated cooling system. But generally, this notebook is used for common tasks, such as browsing the web, responding to emails, etc. And for those things, it does a great job. Of course, it can also edit video in 4K, but it will just take longer to render, but it can certainly do it. I purchased this notebook with 16 gigs of RAM because I do a lot of multitasking. I usually have a dozen tabs open and many applications open as well. So I really didn't need the processing power. To me, it was far more important to have 16 gigs of RAM to keep up with my multitasking. Let us briefly discuss gaming. This is not a gaming machine. I sometimes play Hearthstone and that's about it. And you really shouldn't try to play anything else that requires very much power or else you'll be playing at very low settings with very low FPS. So for all intents and purposes, this machine cannot game. So let's move on. Let's discuss the battery life. And well, the battery life is extraordinary. Apart from the MacBook Air, this notebook has the longest battery life currently on a modern Apple notebook. Apple currently rates it at 10 hours, but I generally get much more than that. I usually listen to music, browse the web, and at times I'm multitasking pretty heavily. And my average is still above 10 hours. I usually get 11 hours if I really try. And that's basically iPad-like battery life. Of course, if you render a video or if I play Hearthstone, then the battery life will go down pretty severely. But apart from those things, the battery is excellent. All of this can be attributed to the ultra-efficient 7360U processor from Intel with a TDP of 15 watts. Even if you push the CPU, it won't drain nearly as much as other Apple notebooks. And that's what makes this a great notebook. The ability to take it with you without having to worry about charging it. The extended battery life is what brings out the true portability of a computer. In theory, you could take this to class and not have to worry about charging it throughout a regular school day, or perhaps a regular work day. And that's what ultimately made the Air great. And this entry-level MacBook Pro is no different. If I really wanted to, I could almost watch all of Daredevil Season 1 on a single charge. Daredevil being under 12 hours in length, and the MacBook Pro's battery life is approaching that amount. Think about that. And for that reason, this laptop is great. Heck, even the current Air can pull this off without much of a problem. That type of battery life is what makes this computer an exceptional laptop. Let's discuss the butterfly keyboard, which has been rather controversial. Personally, I really like the keyboard. I like keyboards that provide an audible feedback. And for this reason, I actually use blue switches on my desktop keyboard. While the MacBook Pro's keyboard isn't loud, it does provide enough physical and audible feedback to feel comfortable. But of course, like with any keyboard, personal preference is key. And you really must try it for yourself to see if you could potentially get used to them. But personally, I really like them. Obviously, there isn't a touch bar to be found on this model. I decided not to spend the extra money on it because frankly, I don't find it to be very useful or at the very least useful enough to justify the premium price. The entry level MacBook Pro could have easily been renamed to MacBook Air or simply MacBook and no one would have complained. Perhaps they could have made the price a tad more affordable, maybe starting at $1,000 and this would have been the perfect Air replacement. The MacBook 12 inch is trying to evolve what the Air originally started but currently the screen size is too small and the CPU is severely underpowered. So until Apple figures out what exactly the unit is, it will not be a proper Air replacement. Hence why the MacBook did not receive the official MacBook Air title. No product is perfect and this laptop is no exception. One of the most noticeable things was the severely underpowered cooling system, which only has one fan. For most tasks, you will never hear it. But if you really push the system, like with rendering a video, then you will definitely hear the very loud fan 
and it will remain loud for a while. But this only occurs when you really push the system. Most of the time, you will never hear the fan. But I still consider it a negative because once it gets going, the fan is very loud. The MacBook Pro includes only two USB Type-C connections, one which will ultimately be used to charge the unit, leaving you with only one USB Type-C. But that's okay, at least for my usage. But if you do need more, unfortunately, you will have to buy an adapter. Although I'm not quite ready to make the jump to this new connection. I'm not happy that Apple did not decide to include another Type-C connection on the opposite side. Although it might be a minor thing, I think Apple would have been better suited to include at least one more Type-C connection, giving you the ability to choose on what side you want to charge the unit. To conclude, the entry-level MacBook Pro is an excellent notebook. And sure, it doesn't have the fastest processor in the lineup, but it offers great portability with an exceptional battery life. And it serves the purpose of a laptop. A lot of us are focused on the specs, and how much performance a laptop offers, rather than how well it functions as an actual laptop. And a proper laptop needs to be light and have all day battery life. And that's what makes the iPad such a great port of a device. And yes, not everyone has battery life as a priority. Some will need all that performance that comes with a heavier system, and that's fine. It's just important to realize the distinction between users. And currently, the MacBook Pro 13 inch is the closest MacBook Air replacement. Well, until Apple figures out what to do with the current MacBook 12 inch, or perhaps once Intel figures out how to create a proper fanless processor, they can actually sustain its performance. Until then, this machine takes the mantle as the laptop with the longest battery life that Apple has to offer, all while being exceptionally portable. Also, I don't really care about the touch bar, if anything, I feel like it slows me down. Besides, I wanted the longest battery life possible, and for that, this machine is king. Before I go, I wanna show you guys my backpack of choice. My MacBook Pro is protected using this luxury backpack from ISM. It is a minimalist bag that provides all the necessary protection, all while looking absolutely beautiful. A full video detailing this luxury bag is now in the works, so stay tuned. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll also like to thank Wondershare for sponsoring this video, so thank you. And be sure to check out the links down below as it helps out the channel. And if you can, be sure to hit that like button. And as always, I'll catch you guys next time.